Okay, so I think we're going to have a look at ternary graphs. These are not particularly tricky once a student figure out how to, figures out how to do them, but um, can be a little bit tricky to get your head around it at first. So I thought it'd be good just to have um, a video that we re where we revise this. Ternary graphs were assessed in 2013. That's last year. It could potentially be assessed this year. It may not. Um, it has been assessed in the past, 2008, um, other years also. This is a ternary graph. It has it's a graph with three axes essentially. They're quite easy to read, but we have to have our wits about us while we're doing it. So we in class had a look at uh, ternaries in this way. We can understand ternaries if we know which way each axis is to be read. Of the three axes, here, here, and here, we have to know. Um, where we need to be looking or where our eyes need to be going in order to figure out exactly what the point in the middle may um, uh, adds up to, what it's actually communicating. So simply, the first axis is the A axis and we need to bear in mind that we're always moving up in a anti-clockwise direction is essentially the way that you read topographic maps. So the first point starts at zero and we move up to the top which is at 100%. Once we get to the top of that axis, we then come down to starting at zero. This is 100 of the A axis moving up here. This is now zero of the B axis moving down to 100% of the B axis in this direction. The same thing follows. Once we've come down this axis here, we then meet zero of the C axis. Then we move across towards 100%. Starting again at 0%, please ignore that 100. It shouldn't be there. Starting at the 0% again of the A axis. So if we put it all together, we read it just like this, moving in the anti-clockwise direction. So let's have a little look at how this might work in um, the exam. So in 2013, this was the question. What percentage of the workforce in country A, so country A is marked here, was employed in the service sector? So here we have the agricultural sector, here we have the service sector, and here we have the manufacturing sector. But in this instance, we just simply need to focus on the service sector. So A on this axis here. So the lines running on this axis run diagonally. This is 20 down here, this is 30 down here, this is 40 down here, 50, 60, 70. So our number is somewhere between 70 and 80. So what percentage of the workforce in country A was employed in the service sector? 2%. It's not possible. It would have to be up here somewhere. 22%. It would have to be down here. 76%. 70? Hmm, 76% looking very likely. And the last one is 98%. It would have to be right down here. So clearly, the answer in this instance is C because 76 runs down here. Let's see if we can do the next question. What is the difference in employment in the manufacturing sector between country C and country B? So manufacturing, the lines are running this way, in this diagonal direction right here. Okay, so um, country C is here. Its manufacturing is somewhere after 20%, say 22%. And for country B, we're somewhere around, say, 28%. Ah, okay. So the options they're giving us are very close indeed, and you may require to get a better answer by looking at the um, using a ruler to try and really figure out exactly where they fall in between these two um, points. But um, we can suggest, or I can suggest, that if we're going to call this 22, and if we call this 28, we're probably looking at a difference of 4%, the answer being uh, B. That is ternary graphs. So essentially, just re recapping, if you keep in mind that your axes always need to be read in an anti-clockwise direction, your A running up this way, which will give your lines the ones running along here, your B running down here, which um, gives you your um, lines that you need to be interested in running down in this direction, and finally your C axis running this way, moving up, up, up in this direction, you should have no problems interpreting ternary graphs.